In Philadelphia, it is against the law to discriminate in employment, housing, or public accommodations on the basis of sexual orientation. In spite of that fact, the lesbian and gay population of Philadelphia claim they are still oppressed. These demonstrators are showing their outrage at the recent U.S. Supreme Court decision upholding a state's right to enforce sodomy laws against homosexuals. In rejecting the court's ruling, they argue that it's unconstitutional and could lead to more repressive actions against the gay community. Once again, the battle line is drawn over the issue of homosexuality. Don't call her yet, because most okay. of the time you don't. Larry Gross, chairman of the Philadelphia Lesbian and Gay Task Force and the director of the University of Pennsylvania's Annenberg School of Communications, worries about the possible repercussions from the court's decision. I'm very much afraid that it will be taken even beyond its own implications by right-wing uh, homophobes and used as an excuse for attempts to further attack uh, lesbian and gay people or to further erode our, uh, our civil liberties. I think it will be taken as a, uh, as a, as a hunting license by the, by the right wing, and I'm very much concerned about that. So I think it will go down in constitutional history as one of the uh, worst decisions, uh, and one that I hope will be uh, reversed by a later court uh, in the near as opposed to the distant future. In Philadelphia and within the university, Gross has established himself as an outspoken advocate of gay rights, but he's paid a price for his commitment. The price you pay if you're visible is that you're vulnerable, uh, that uh, uh, visibility makes you a target for those people who wish to, uh, to attack you. A person determines uh, the extent of their rights by many of the choices they make. In life. Dr. B. Sam Hart is the Philadelphia minister whose views on homosexuality gained notoriety when President Reagan nominated him to head the Civil Rights Commission in 1982. A murderer has certain basic human rights. Uh, a thief has certain basic human rights. A prostitute, a, a homosexual, these basic rights, a right to live, a right to eat, a right to have a place to live, a right to wear clothes, these are basic rights that our society protects for all people. Where I draw the line is that uh, immorality has no rights. As pastor of the Germantown Christian Assembly, Hart believes that most people are anti-gay or homophobic and agree with his point of view. To say that here is not a, um, an immoral issue would be to close your eyes to what the scripture teaches. If the scripture is the standard that gives us right and wrong, then homosexuality is wrong, it is immoral. And as an immoral thing, a person who now chooses to go into immorality in a land or in a culture where it is considered as such is going to forfeit certain rights. At Philadelphia City Hall, the Mayor's Commission for Sexual Minorities works to help gay men and women protect themselves against discrimination. Susan Badeau, Executive Director of the Commission, wants to make sure that people do not misinterpret the Supreme Court decision. I think people um, just assume that homosexuality is illegal as a result of that decision or that they now have permission to discriminate. And you don't in Philadelphia. No. Badeau also warns people about the dangers of living life as openly gay. I, I would love for people to, to feel safe in taking the risk or uh, feel willing to take the risk of coming out, but it's a crapshoot or it's Russian roulette. And I can't recommend that because it's impossible to predict in any given situation um, where the landmines are. And um, no one can think about coming out without expecting that they might step on one of those landmines. Joe Beam, a freelance writer who lives in Center City, Philadelphia, remembers what it was like before he came out in 1981. I lived worrying about, you know, how I crossed my legs, how I held my cigarette, how did I pick up a glass, uh, were these colors too bright, did they match too well? Um, so it was, it was a very self-scrutinizing kind of life. 
Now all of that has changed. He's a board member of the National Coalition of Black Lesbians and Gays and has recently edited In the Life, a black gay anthology, which is soon to be published. Beam says the price he pays for being visible oh, oh, is worth it. I think that, that um, what it's allowed me to do is that all the energy that I would have put into hiding uh, hiding from my parents, hiding from my coworkers, hiding from my friends, hiding from you, I can now put into to writing, into my art, uh, into, into some sort of creative endeavor. I can walk down the street with my head held high. Beam confesses another reason for gaining self-esteem and being openly gay. So that the, the, the brothers and sisters behind me don't have to, they don't have to go through through those kinds of struggles, that they don't have to, you know, become alcoholics or other substance abusers um, to move through this. Fernando Cheng Moy is a lawyer. He has analyzed the Supreme Court's sodomy speech. ruling. This case is really about freedom of speech, freedom of association. It has very little to do with sodomy. It has to do with the right of people to be secure in their houses, which is specifically provided for in the Constitution. Moy shares his home with Lynn. Theirs is a serious relationship, which they consider to be as stable as any other couple's. Their Germantown neighborhood is quiet and comfortable, and they've designed their life together to include a variety of friends. I have the same needs that other people have to, what some people, some people don't, to be nurtured, to be a parent, to nurture children. I could, if I wanted, breed like heterosexuals and have my own children. I choose, I would choose to adopt someone who needs a parent, especially a child from a third or from a developing country. The need to be a parent is something Moy has tried to satisfy. After being turned down as a potential adoptive parent, he applied for foster parenting. I was told that if an opportunity arose where a child needed a foster parent, that child would not be placed in my house. That child would be placed quote, in a normal household. We are everywhere. We shall be free. We the controversy surrounding homosexuality will not end anytime soon. The gay community will continue to protest what they feel is discrimination. And Dr. Hart, along with many others, will continue to preach what he believes. Homosexuality is considered in our society, and certainly biblically, it is considered an evil. It is not something that we want to accept as an alternate lifestyle. The Bible condemns it. Now, I speak as a minister. The Bible strongly condemns it. A person who does not accept that would have to say, I don't believe the Bible. It condemns it all through the scriptures, anywhere it's referred to. It's referred to in a sense of condemnation. In fact, God's judgment is promised for those nations that accept it or that tolerate it. The weight of moral and social objections to homosexuality are not altered overnight or by the compulsion of a law. Homosexuality, a subject once considered taboo, has become one of the most challenging issues of the 80s.